year, Washington came to Corvallis looking for an easy W. They got the win, but it was not easy. Oregon State ran up 348 yards on the ground, and the Beavers had the Huskies on the ropes. But Oregon State turned it over five times inside the Washington 20. Even though they outgained the Huskies 488 to 369. Two guys who were not in Corvallis last year, Corey Dillon and Brock Heward. Dillon leads the conference in rushing, and the redshirt freshman Heward has Washington on schedule for a New Year's Day appearance. Oregon State in Washington, next. The fog is lifting on Husky Stadium. It is homecoming on a gorgeous November afternoon, and we've got football for you. The Oregon State Beavers against the number 19 Washington Huskies. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz, and welcome to Husky Stadium. If you're setting your watch on this football game, you might want to move it ahead a little bit because both of these teams will move the football on the ground. So we should get through this rather quickly. Look at the numbers. Oregon State comes in second in the Pac-10 in rushing. They can move it on the ground. The Huskies very good defensively against the rush. They stuffed USC for a minus 14 yards last week. I'm joined today by Sonny Sixpiller and Steve Fries. You guys were both in Corvallis last year. And Steve, I don't think people realize how close Oregon State came to winning that football game. No question about it, Rich. Last year was first, it was Tim uh, Alexander's first start as an Oregon State Beaver. He had 182 yards on the ground, another 140 throwing the football. He's a tremendous, tremendous talent with great speed. He can throw the football too. And last week against Arizona, really in his first big time game to since last year's Husky game. He had 153 yards rushing the football. Well, the key, though, Steve, is he's got to be healthy for that offense to really work. And what big knock on him is his hamstring has been pulled much of the season. Now, the number two defense in the conference is the Huskies, and with him hurt, it's going to make their job a little bit easier. No question. And, and the Beavers have a couple of big backs. They run the football up the middle. Uh, they'll do pretty well there, but they're going to have to face these tough linebackers of Washington all day. Well, I'll tell you what, John Fiala and Inc. Aliaga, they're seniors. They're second to the last game at home. Homecoming, they're ready for it. <laughs> all right, you two guys have talked about stopping uh, Oregon State offensively. Stopping Washington offensively has not been easy. And to do it, you have to stop the Huskies from running the football. Oregon State defensively, Sonny, is going to have a tough task in slowing down Washington. I'll tell you what, though. They play hard. Everybody knows that. They're physical. They're an attack-style defense. Much like the Huskies, they will bring a lot of people and bring them often. Sonny, they do attack. But that's been also their Achilles heel. They'll make the big plays, 17 sacks in the last four weeks, but they'll also have big plays against them. With a guy like this, Corey Dillon, it could be a long day if the Beavers don't control him. Yeah, it was a long day for the USC Trojans. Dylan has run wild. And again, you may see him carrying the football 35 to 40 times. This is a traditional football game. And traditionally, Oregon State has played very well against Washington. And we're looking for that today. As Oregon State comes north to face the Washington Huskies. It's next on Fox Sports Northwest. Back to Husky Stadium, Jim Lambright getting set to bring out the Washington Huskies who come in at six and two, five and one in the conference. And although they're still alive in the Rose Bowl hunt, they would like to finish strong to keep themselves in the Cotton Bowl hunt as well. The boats are arriving. They expect a full house today, Washington and Oregon States. The Beavers at one and seven and one in five in the Pac-10 conference. Their lone win for Jerry Pettibone and crew, a 26 to 12 win over the Stanford Cardinal. And Oregon State will kick it off. It is a gorgeous day, little bit of a wind. They expect sun, they don't expect any wet stuff today. The temperatures could get up over 60 by the afternoon. And we're ready to go. A short kick. 
at his 22 yard line Joe Jarzenka and he's out to the 26 and that's where Washington will put it in play. Brock Heward the red shirt freshman a 49 percent completion percentage his numbers are not sterling seven touchdowns five interceptions but when you have Corey Dillon behind you ripping off 150 yards a game it allows a young red shirt freshman quarterback to mature and that's exactly what Brock Heward has done this year. First and 10 Washington at their own 27. Straight up the gut goes Corey Dillon. And he's stopped by Mark Williams, the senior safety for Oregon State. Great example right there of Oregon State's defense. They will bring everybody. They'll end up in an eight or sometimes even a nine-man front because of their blitzing. Very typical of what you'll see all day, the aggressiveness that Oregon State plays. Gate of one, second down and nine. Oregon State has been very successful against young quarterbacks because of all the mix they get. Here come the Beavers and Dillon stopped spins away and he swallowed up at the 27 yard line. Brian Rogers the sophomore linebacker made the stop offensively. We talked about here the red shirt freshman Washington does not have a whole lot of seniors offensively. Tony Coates Bob Sapp is back. Olin Krutz Benji Olson and the very versatile Lynn Johnson at the tackle spot. Cam Cleveland has turned into one of the best tight ends in the conference. Hathon is the deep threat. Janoski a possession receiver. Keaho at times will be in to block for Corey Dillon. And Washington confused right now offensively. Heward motioning to the sideline and he'll have to burn a timeout. And so Washington faced with third down and ten. Not on the same page and the Huskies have to take a timeout. Well Steve was talking about it Rich. He uh, the Oregon State defense will bring a lot of people. There were eight men near the line of scrimmage that time Steve and look like Brock Hewitt didn't quite get the message right. Well Oregon State flips their people around too Sonny. You, you've got a couple of linemen that change positions. A lot of times Oregon State will only have two down linemen sometimes one down lineman a lot of different guys play in different position including linemen covering people covering the tight end a lot. This is a Beaver team at one and seven they have played well as of late they gave a real scare to Arizona State and if you ask Jim Lambright this is not a one and seven team. This team is a real strong team year in and year out but they've had a hard time putting the points on the board. Uh, they play the dominant defense, uh, but just haven't been able to find the right balance. Uh, I, I think they're better than the 1-7 because they've played so many close games. But you look at the, at the final, final bottom line, they still win. And, uh, and I understand that, and so is Jerry. And that's something that Oregon State has not been able to do. In fact, the Beavers under Pettibone are just 6 and 40 in Pac-10 conference games. But traditionally, Steve, they give Washington fits defensively. Why? Well, the, it's amazing because Washington's been so powerful. The Beavers always play well against Washington and Oregon, the two traditional games, and Jerry seems to get them up to play the Huskies every year. Third down and 10. First two plays, very good for Oregon State. Heward under some pressure. Hit as he throws. Coleman can't make the catch at midfield, and it's three and out for Washington. You'll see this uh, several games this season started just this way. Takes the offense of the opposing team two or three uh, series, maybe even a quarter and a half before they figure out what to do with all these people. <laughs> well, here's our surprise. Emmett Sarshar back to punt. And, and that's was a real problem for Washington last week against USC. Mark Williams is deep for Oregon State. It's a high hanger. Williams a fair catch and he makes it at the 35 yard line. The Huskies had a punt a field goal and a point after touchdown blocked but they still managed to beat USC by a score of 21 to 10. There's Tim Alexander and I guess the big question is how healthy is the hamstring. He well, ripped off 153 yards against Arizona State last week. Well and most of that 153 was in the first half. This is a young guy who if he's at full speed can have 30 40 yards in his possession just so quickly but he is not well. There is no question he's not at full speed. 
Little option right. He'll pitch it to King, who's out to the 39 yard line and then out of bounds. Alexander is joined offensively for the Beavers, a team that right now in the conference is scoring just 16 points per game. Foreman, Perez, Critchlow, Thompson, and Owens up front, all but Owens are dinged up right now. That's not a real healthy offensive front for the Beavers. King and Kirkman, Kirkman a very good fullback. Roddy Tompkins has emerged as a big play guy. Joe Kuykendall, the tight end, Todd Harris, the other wide receiver. It's a gain of four, second and six. Three back look. And Alexander will keep. He's stopped by Jerry Jensen, and he's out to the 42 yard line. Defensively, Washington comes in, second in the conference, and second in the conference against the rush. This is a unit that leads the Pac 10 with 35 sacks. Richie, Tuiaea, and Campbell up front. Chorak is really a rush in. But he's listed as a linebacker. We talked about Aliaga and Fiala, and Jerry Jensen had a great game, three sacks against USC. Smith and Miller, the redshirt freshman on the corners, Parrish and Burton are the safeties. Alexander moved it out to the 43 yard line. Third down and three. Alexander close. No, he stopped at the 44 yard line. Nigel Burton finished the deal. Nigel Burton is a tough little guy, Steve. He is a guy that does not bless with great speed. He's played corner. Played safety, and you'll see at the end of this play, he's also a strong uh, linebacker type. Well, he's and he's a transfer from Pacific, is that right? That's correct. Well, he looked, he hadn't taken any statics <laughs> finishing that play off. He kind of got there at the right time, though. Defensive backs like that. Oh yeah, at the end. <laughs> Doug Stuckey's punt. Payton makes an adventurous fair catch, which stops him at the 25-yard line. And that's where Washington will put it in play. Oregon State and Washington. We're scoreless. 12 minutes left in the first. Along with Steve Brees and Sonny Sixkiller, I'm Rich Waltz, Oregon State and Washington, scoreless. The Huskies with an illegal block on the return, which will back them up to the 15-yard line. And a very good first series for this Oregon State defense. A Beaver defense that has forced 21 turnovers this year. Dillon over the left side gets a little bit of daylight. Brian Rogers made the stop. Nathan McAtee. Also in on the stop. We haven't had a chance to meet this Oregon State defense. Rectorfield, Hewitt, and McCain up front. A young and very active core of linebackers. McAtee, Murray, and Rogers. Brian Jones is really a, a mini linebacker and a big safety. He's the rover. Elihi, Williams, Ruffin, and Andre Holland on the corner. And the Beavers actually are using four down linemen now. We haven't seen it much all year. But that's what's existing today. Heward in trouble. Down he goes at the five yard line. Busting through Nathan McAtee. And a big sack. Washington now backed up to their own eight yard line. Big play by the Beavers here, Steve. They're bringing a lot of people, blind side being a left handed quarterback. But the play was designed to be a screen to the near side. And they had it covered perfectly. Excellent job by the Beavers. McAtee at Bellevue, high school kid right here, has had a great junior season so far. That's his third sack for the year. Out of Newport High School, the same high school that just produced the National League Rookie of the Year and Todd Hollinsworth of the Dodgers. Third down and 15. Heward in trouble again. Cuts loose, looking for Cleveland, and it's incomplete. This is a Beaver defense that came in with 21 sacks. And Washington has been able to protect the passer. They've given up just 14 sacks coming in. Well, the big thing here is that they've gained yardage because of the penalty on the kickoff, or the punt, excuse me. And now with the Husky punting game being so short, Oregon State's going to have great field position. We can take that field position. <laughs> and it's scary with Tim Alexander back there at quarterback. Sarshar, five yards deep in his end zone. Williams. Awaiting this one, a high spiraling kick. 
No fair catch. Well, I guess he did. <laughs> I'm not Whoa. sure. Williams. Either he had his hand up or he did. He didn't think he made a fair catch. The officials thought he did. I didn't see it either. He blew a whistle, so he must have. Let's see if we can get a look at it here, guys. I don't see a fair catch. No. No, he was just waving his arms, getting in position to catch the ball. And he definitely is trying to run right there before he hears the uh, whistle. Yeah, but the whistle did blow, and it, a poor call may have hurt the Beavers, but they have great field position right at midfield. Alexander turns and gives to Achille King, and King is up to the 41 yard line. A gain of about 10. John Fiala made the stop. Oregon State ate up big time yardage against the Huskies last year in Corvallis. Steve, isn't this where King is his best running straight up the middle? He's not a slasher dasher being 240 pounds. Not at all. If he keeps his shoulders square, Sonny, he's a real good back. In fact, one of the better backs in the league, and, and he's got a great nickname, AK-47. <laughs> Averaging four yards a carry and about 67 yards a game. Alexander on a quick quarterback sneak will pick up the first down. Mac Tuya Ea made the stop for Washington. And the Beavers are in Husky territory right now at the 39 yard line. Another guy that's very fun to watch run the football is a fullback Darren Kirkman. He's had 110 yards two weeks ago. He's an excellent excellent power runner but has a lot more speed than you expect out of 250 to 55 pounds. First and ten. There's your man, Darren Kirkman, straight ahead, and he's got an eight-yard pickup. I kind of liken him to another fullback that the Huskies saw and had a lot of trouble with, Mark Edwards of Notre Dame. Yes, they did, but this guy right here is a lot bigger than Mark Edwards, 250 pounds. He's only lost five yards rushing the whole season. Gotta admire the free safety standing up there and taking him on. I haven't seen many free safeties bring down Derek Kirkman this season. He's a good one. Tony Parrish, number seven. And Oregon State is moving the football. That was a gain of nine. Alexander to the air for the first time. Man open. Got him at the five. Loose ball. Through the end zone it goes. It might be a touchback. Or it might be a completion at the four. Roddy Tompkins the catch. They'll mark it at the four. First down, Oregon State. And a gorgeous throw from Tim Alexander. Boy, he had a lot of pressure on him. Did a good job. He doesn't look like his percentage is he's only about 39%. This throws right on the money, Steve. Well, it is. In fact, Tim's been very successful. He does hit the ground. It was a good call by the officials. Tim's been very successful throwing the football when it's within the scheme of his offense, when he's using the play pass and so forth when he has to drop back and throw the ball from behind he's been very uh, had very little success straight ahead not much going Achille King and it will be second down and goal so Oregon State on the doorstep early on eight minutes left first half no score we talked to uh, brief second ago about Oregon State's passing game the first three games of the season when Tim was healthy the Beavers were over 50 percent in the flow of their offense as soon as they got behind they were 20 25 percent throwing the football Deshaun Williams is the deep back King over left side still on his feet and down to the one Chris Campbell made the stop along with Jason Chorak and Jerry Jensen and it's third and goal for the Beavers. Oregon State's had a lot of success in the red zone this year, Steve. I can see why with the power backs like this. Look at this guy. Great leg drive. It hadn't been for Jerry Jensen knocking him off balance. He would scored. Well, there's no quit in these up backs. There's no question about that. Deshaun Williams, the third back in this power eye, is a little bit different kind of back. He's a cutter and slasher. We'll probably see him in this series. Third and goal. King. Kirkman, rather. Is he in? Beavers think he is. <laughs> and I think he's short. I think it'll be fourth and goal. It is fourth and goal from the one foot line. Darren Kirkman, David Ritchie made the stop. 
Right. Do they kick it or they go for it, Steve? <laughs> well, you uh, you have not watched the Beavers kick the ball this year, Sonny, or you wouldn't ask that question. They will run this football. <laughs> I guarantee you. Looked to me like he was in the end zone. Oregon State just three of twelve. I think regardless of if they had a good field goal kicker, they would go for it right on the doorstep. Fourth and goal. Alexander. No. no. And Washington holds. Tim Alexander tried to go up and over. And he ran into Inkaliaga in the process. It's hard for me to believe, Steve, that a quarterback, as small as he is, would do a quarterback sneak when your running backs are 240 and 250. I agree with you. Certainly in that uh, situation, you'd think he'd hand it to those big guys. Or if you're going to sneak it, certainly go low and look for a seam or a crack instead of going up in the air. Tim is only a sophomore. Yep. And so a 49-yard drive comes one yard short of pay dirt. And Washington now has to be concerned about getting it out of their end zone. Heward will turn and give it to Dillon, who skips his way out to the four-yard line before he runs into Brian Rogers. Start of this game very reminiscent of the Oregon State game with Southern Cal. Beavers held, 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 and all of a sudden a 96-yard run right up the middle against the splits and defense. Well, Corey Dillon is a guy that can get you that type of yardage. He had 128 last week against the Trojans, 259 against Oregon. He is right on the cusp of breaking some big Washington records, chasing down Napoleon Kaufman. Cam Kissel in motion. Dillon again. This time he's wrapped up by Tony Hewitt. And not a big gain, and I'm, I'm really uh, impressed with the way Oregon State has stuffed Corey Dillon early on. Well, Oregon State, not being a very big defensive team, utilizes their speed, and they hit the gaps. You see the little game they're playing there where the, the defensive end goes in and the inside guy comes outside. Those games they like to play. They have to. Their size is very small. We've, we've, their Oregon State lists the line at 262. I don't think it's anywhere near close to that. Hewitt out of Anaconda, Montana. That is rugged country. He's a senior. Washington still minus one on the ground. They go to the air. Incomplete. Good coverage. Andre Holland all over Fred Coleman. And it's three and out for Washington again. Holland, Oregon State's best coverage cornerback, usually left out there alone on his side. Does an excellent job. When you play the defensive scheme that the Beavers do, when you bring a lot of people, you better have good corners. And they feel they have one in Holland, who's just a sophomore. And it's one thing about this Oregon State defense, very young. That snap dribbles back to Sarshar. That could have been a real disaster. No fair catch by Williams this time. No whistle. And Lester Towns brings him down at the 35-yard line. But Oregon State is in control in this football game. The Beavers and the Huskies are scoreless. No score, 440 left in the first, but the scoreboard really does not tell the story of this first half as Darren Kirkman trying to crawl for some yardage. He'll get maybe one. Oregon State has moved the football and they have stopped Washington cold offensively, but the Beavers were stuffed themselves on fourth and goal from about the one foot line. Jerry Pettibone. And these Oregon State Beavers, I really got the sense, Steve, talking to Jerry this week, that he is still extremely frustrated about last year's game in Corvallis. Well, I, I think there's no question about that. He feels the Beavers had a chance to win it. Five uh, turnovers inside the 20. Beavers just haven't figured out a way to score the football. Kirkman met by Jerry Jensen. 
and Chris Campbell. Also, Lester Towns in there, and that's what's going to happen when you're 250 pounds and uh, some guy comes in and hits you high when you're off balance. Watch the end of this play, Steve. 34. Here he comes, Lester Towns. <laughs> he has been making big hits like that throughout the season. Just a freshman, Towns, boy, it's tough to crack that quartet of linebackers, Jensen, Aliaga, Fiala, but Towns, as the season has progressed, has been able to do that. He's been a real star on special teams as well. Third down, Beavers will pick up the first down. Kirkman, the catch, can't stay on his feet. He's out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Tim wow. Alexander under pressure, put it right on the money. And as we give great tribute to Lester Towns for his big hits, I believe that his man on this play was the man that caught the ball. Darren Kirkman. Nice effort by Darren, but he, geez, he, he stepped out of bounds and had to move about a yard to get there. Good example again. I don't know why the Beavers seem to find a way to not score. There he's wide open. Uh, I've never seen a chalk line get somebody, but they did there. King has some room. And is swallowed up by Tony Parrish at the 10 after a pickup of about five yards. Now there's an example, I believe, I talked to some of the coaches that King will, when he needs to go straight ahead with the power, tries to go laterally like that, and he loses all his, that he's gained. Well, he does. He's, uh, he's done this several right times this season. He cost the Beavers dearly with a safety two weeks ago at Arizona. He hits the ball straight ahead. He was a, a wishbone fullback at Army for three seasons before transferring, and he's just getting a little bit of the feel of picking it to the outside. Second down and five. He's going to go outside here. Burton trips him up at the 14-yard line. Nigel Burton coming up from his safety spot. When you play Oregon State and you're a safety, instead of running pass patterns, you're going to have to come up and fill in a real hurry. Well, not only is he tough, he's smart. Look at this guy. He's going low on him, and I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. And you want him to catch him when he's going to the sideline, too. <laughs> Third down and 10 now for Oregon State. When the Beavers have had to throw the football, they've done it and done it well here today. Two young wide receivers, Harris and Tompkins, a true freshman, a redshirt freshman. Beavers looking for receivers, obviously. To the end zone, open was Tompkins, but Alexander overthrew him, and Oregon State will try to settle for three. A little more air underneath that ball, Steve. I believe that would have been a touchdown. Well, there's no question about Tim Alexander's arm strength. He really can throw the football a long ways throws the curl those types of passes very well his touch is questioned he just hasn't been a thrower much so. Doug Stuckey is on to attempt the field goal as miserable as Washington's kicking game has been Oregon State's has been equally ineffective this year three of 12 in field goals this one coming from 32 yards is good and the Beavers are on the board first Oregon State Three, Washington, nothing, it's early. Three nothing Oregon State on the board Doug Stuckey from 32 yards out and that man has had a good afternoon so far Tim Alexander. Jarzinka upended at the 27 yard line. All right gentlemen what does Washington have to do to get their offense going because they're going nowhere in a real hurry. Well coming into the ball game they thought that maybe 600 pounds versus the Oregon State defensive front would get some success. Uh, so far the Beavers have just really stepped it up a notch and it's no fun coming into a ball game knowing you're 24 point underdogs. So they've got a lot of pride at stake out there especially in the early going. Steve. Well the Beavers have been very successful in the first halves of the game. They've led three times been close 
four other only one game have the Beavers not been in the football game at half second half a lot of teams do just what the Huskies are going to do right now they bring in two tight ends and pound it and last week it was a halftime lead over number four Arizona State Heward not going to pound it going upstairs Payton can't make the play and again there's the man on the corner Andre Holland out there all alone <laughs> He's got to have some nerve to stand out there because he's there every week all by himself one on one good coverage one thing on this pass play I feel is that see that he didn't lead him you got to lead the receiver when you're one on one in the open field like that let him run to it. Payton has been the big play guy for Washington four touchdowns averaging 14 yards a catch. Second down and ten. It's Dylan trying to get outside. He makes a cutback, but runs into Tom Huddifer, the senior, who up until a couple weeks ago wasn't a real part of this Beaver defense. <laughs> Certainly not. Huddifer described himself as not a guy on the scout team, but a guy who was on the jog around the field team. Got a chance to play three weeks ago, had three sacks against Stanford. He, just, he has a lot of size for the Beavers' defensive line, too, and he was their player of the week last week on defense, just having a great fifth year senior. Another Tucson. Third down and eight after a gain of two to the air again, this time with time. Payton the catch right in midfield. Jerome Payton out to midfield. And that time Heward was right on the money. Amon Hatcher with the coverage. Looked like double coverage actually with a beautiful throw by Brock. Having time to throw the football Steve. Laid it right on the numbers. Well a great throw and actually uh, it was a defense where the Beavers kept a free safety. So uh, the cornerback actually had inside help. Should have used it a little better and stayed out on that corner. And that's the first time that the Huskies have thrown away from Andre Holland. Movement up front. Flags go down. Dead ball. Offsides on the defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Pat Flood, the referee today. And it will be first down and five now for Washington. You talk about first halves. One thing that Oregon State really could take away from last week's game is the job that they did on Jake Plummer, who was just 11 of 22 for 146 yards. You saw Heward's numbers not real impressive early on. And Dylan with a four yard pickup. Nathan McAtee made the stop for Oregon State. I think you're right. It, Jake Plummer, if anybody in this conference knows how to handle a blitz, it's Jake. And the Beavers sacked him four times. We're in his face all day. Uh, 10, 12 hurries as you take a look there at a nice shoestring tackle. First quarter is in the books. And just like last year in Corvallis, Oregon State playing very, very well against Washington. Beavers on top, 3 0 on Fox Sports. Start of the second quarter. Second down, half a yard. Heward throwing short. Janoski makes the catch, trying to escape from Williams, and he'll get the first down to the 30 yard line. And Washington into Oregon State territory and moving the football. That looked like the old flood pattern, Steve, where you got two receivers and you bring Janoski over and just hit the guy that's open. Well, again, it's it's man to man for the Beavers. You take a look at these first quarter stats. 45 passing yards for the Beavs. Uh, they had 20 last week in the entire game, so that's a good start. And again, within the framework of their offense. First and 10, Dylan 
really has been held in check so far and he stumbles forward to the 25 yard line Nathan McAtee made the stop that was a very good play right there by McAtee it looked like he had some yardage up the middle if he had made that little cutback good job by the Beavers well the Beavers have had some problems with some missed tackles and give the big play away today the Beavers have been excellent as far as holding on to people a lot of single tackles so far um, in situations where it's come up and that may be the single toughest thing to do against Dylan he's not a guy that runs away from you but he busts a lot of tackles he's extremely strong in his upper body 6 to 220 pounds on second down Heward to the end zone and overthrows Jerome Payton. Out of the end zone. Smart move. Just throw the ball away. Knew he was in trouble. Had some people after him, and that's a very smart move. Redshirt freshman quarterback. Third down, five yards to go. Beavers get good pressure right here. Looked like uh, just an absolute clean break by Anoke Brechterfield, who's uh, the leading sacker for the Beavs and has moved all around. So they put him on usually the weak side of the formation, so he's got an open side, usually has a, a bat blocking him. He's got real good quicks. Third down, five, and a three receiver set for Washington. Dillon in motion. Here a quick pop. Janoski close to the first down. Mark Williams made the stop. He is right on the stripe. The Huskies needed to get to the 20. And that's just about where they're going to spot it. He has been quiet as of late. Janoski had a great start to the season. The punt return for a touchdown against Arizona State. But they really have been unable to get him the football as of late. Well, the other thing, too, though, Rich, is that Brock Heward, uh, every quarterback has him. You have a favorite receiver, and he's really gelled with Jerome Payton the last uh, three or four ball games, And also Cam Cleveland seems to hit a safety valve up the middle. Janoski had a great play right there getting the first down. What an effort. Jim Lambright. <laughs> A little bit of a smile. They did get pick up a first down. That can't be Jim Lambright. He is smiling. I haven't seen that for years. <laughs> Where's that linebacker look he used to have? Husky Stadium full on a homecoming. And so far, it's been the road team that has spoiled the plans. Oregon State with a 3 0 lead. Washington has marched to the oh, Beaver man. 20. And Washington again. With too many X's and too many Y's in the ball game, Heward has to call a timeout, and so the Huskies will talk about it. Oregon State on top, Washington, and Oregon State on Fox Sports Northwest. Along with Sonny Six Killer and Steve Priest, Rich Waltz with you. Oregon State three, Washington nothing, with 13-11 left in this second quarter. But Washington with the football at the Beaver 20, first and 10. Oregon State showing blitz. Here they come. Dylan tries to get outside of it, and he'll get rolled out of bounds. I'm on Hatcher with a nice stop. Second down and six. Saw the blitz coming from outside Brian Jones. Now we haven't heard Brian Jones name today much, but he's been a big play guy for the Beavers coming from that rover position, which is kind of a disguised linebacker said earlier. There's Brian coming from the outside, just about makes the play and then a nice play by Armand Hatcher. Corey Dillon so far has yet to break a big one. Heward, take on the catch close to the first down. Andre Holland was the cover man and did a pretty good job on the play. He did. One thing about Jerome Payton, guys, is that he's got great speed. He's one of the fastest guys on the team, so you've got to respect him going to the corner. Very good route, very good throw by Brock Heward. Payton there just where he had to get to the first down. That's the way you got to cut those things off. Excellent job by Jerome Payton. It was enough for the first down. First and goal from the nine. Go check for 
Play clock down to one, and the Huskies just get it off. Dillon, touchdown, Washington. A nine-yard carry for Corey Dillon. When he cut back, no one was home. You notice on this play, Brock Hewitt had audible at the line of scrimmage to this play. Great blocking right there. Very good angle, good camera. And good running, no question. He used the blocking you're talking about. And again, once you get through that first rush of Beavers, there's nobody there because everybody's committed. Randy Jones, who is kicking today. John Wales is out with a hip flexor, adds the extra point. Dillon with a nine-yard run. And Corey Dillon with 15 touchdowns now has tied the Washington season record set by Rashawn Sheehy. So 15 touchdowns now for Dillon. Washington on the board. A 7-3 lead. Impressive drive for Jim Lambright and the Huskies. Eating up over four minutes of clock. 11 plays. 72 yards. Now it's going to be interesting to see on this kickoff. Oregon State has been doing it as well, Steve. A little pooch kickoff with uh, Wales out. Mandy Jones now has to come in and try and do the same thing. Well, the Beavers have been victimized a couple of times with the pooch kick. Earlier in the season, a couple of times the kicking team was able to field the kick, gain great field position, and the Beavers have a very, very good kickoff return man. Armand Hatcher, number 15, sits second in the conference behind ASU's battle, and he can run it back. He's, he's got 215 pounds rolling at about a 4-5 clip. <laughs> There's Armand Hatcher. Certainly the yes. Beavers know everything about Terry Battle with his return last <laughs> week. You know, that's something that Washington has not done, return a kickoff for a touchdown since 1979. Whoa. And a long dry spell. We'll see how Jones does it and see if, in fact, They'll take the pooch kick out of the playbook. This is one special team that has been a bright spot for Washington. The kickoff team. And the pooch kick is still in the book. It's a fair catch that is made at the 23 yard line. Mike Jaycott, the reserve fullback, makes that catch. Uh, that's the way you're supposed to do it. It's too bad he didn't know he had a long ways to run. The pooch kick is not something you see a lot and as you see Jaycott right now it's a difficult decision to make for an up back whether to make the fair catch or try to make the catch. Well you're no baseball guy Rich you know the shortstop going out the center fielder coming in you keep going and on Husky Stadium it's very difficult to hear. Yeah and if the deep guy can get there you let him take it but until you hear him you've got to make the catch. Alexander gives to the second man throw. Just it was a Keely King. Now to the 24 yard line no gain on the play David Ritchie made the stop and now the question I guess is can Oregon State build upon the first quarter when they did move the football against Washington. Well they should they're two for three the Beavers are two for three right now throwing the football 45 yards they need to get it up upstairs throw a little bit uh, spread this Washington team around. That's right they've got their leading receiver now in the tailback. Deshaun Williams. Who is a real weapon out to the 32 yard line? This is Darren Kirkman. Tony Parrish made the stop. Your comment, Sonny, about the leading receiver playing tailback. It is Deshaun Williams. He catches a lot of balls from the flank position. They put him out in a double wing, put him in a lot of different sets to try to get him the football where he can create some real havoc out of an open field situation. He's also thrown. I for was two just about to say he can throw him, he can catch him, and he can run him. Alexander, the pitch. Here's our first look at Williams, who scampers out of bounds with the first down, and Oregon State moves the sticks. A gain of 10. Williams is a sophomore out of Union City in the San Francisco Bay Area. 16 catches, averaging five yards a carry as well. Well, he's got slashing type of moves and great speed. He's a 4-3, 4-4 guy, fastest guy on Oregon State's team, and he can fly. Ran right by Lester Towns, and Lester for a big linebacker has good speed. 
King hitting the backfield. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. Josh Smith, the sophomore out of Bellingham. First to get there. Second down and 10. Just the lead play. Again, Darren Kirkman, 34, is a fine blocker. You notice his block. He does his job, but not good play from the Beaver lineman, or should I say the other way around. The Huskies make an excellent uh, play on the defensive side. Second down and 10. Alexander outside the pocket has his man. Gorgeous throw. Todd Harris, who came to Corvallis as a quarterback, makes the catch, and it's first down, Oregon State. Todd moved to the wide receiver position. This is the sprint out the Beavers run. Todd's outside, runs a nice sideline pattern. He is a receiver now, and like many Oregon State players who came here as a wishbone quarterback, they've got him spread all over the defense. Not a real pretty pass, but I tell you what, he delivered it where he had to on the run, and that's not an easy throw. In talking to Denny Schuler, offensive coordinator of the Beavers, you can see Oregon State running up some yards, although not on that play. One of the toughest things for the Beavers this year as they tried to get more pass into their offensive balance was finding wide receivers because there just weren't any in the program uh, when Schuler arrived and they tried to make that transition. Well, no question. The Beavers uh, recruited a young guy, Roddy Tompkins, who was the first true freshman to start at Oregon State since 1970 or 71 uh, when the true freshman could start playing. Roddy was the leading receiver until a couple of weeks ago and teams have shut him down, but everybody else playing is young. Tompkins has a catch today. It was a tumbling catch. Play clock has expired, and I think the Beavers might have taken too much time. On second down and eight, it might become second and 13. Going on with the receiver situation, Oregon State had a lot of backs from the wishbone set. A lot of those backs are now out playing wide receiver over on the defensive side, but they've got the two young kids now playing. Roddy Tompkins and, of course, Todd Harris, who was the backup flanker until two weeks ago, started his first game last week did a great job blocking although not catching the ball until today. Tim Alexander throwing the ball well today this pitch tough one to field and that play will lose yardage. Nigel Burton in the backfield slows down Deshaun Williams. They had that snuffed all the way kind of an interesting call with second and that much yardage to go Steve but now they're in a tougher hole now everybody knows that they should throw but Oregon State not, doesn't necessarily do it. No they, they don't necessarily do it. First of all they are still an option team. The Beavers have, uh, have gotten rid of the wishbone set but they are still an option football team. They are not a passing team. Their passing game long yardage is still roll out and play pass. It is not a drop back split formation passing game. Blitz coming. Alexander going to go long. Harris is there, but out of bounds. He makes the catch. It's incomplete. Mel Miller with good coverage on the Washington sideline. We've mentioned Nigel Burton on all the tackles he's been making so far in the first half. He's coming on a blitz on the top. You see Ink Aliaga, Jerry Jensen. They brought the house on this one. Alexander after the play looked like he was in pain but I think it was from the incompletion he was not really hit Payton with a fair catch makes it at the 21 yard line and Washington last time they touched it went 72 yards they've got 78 to go this time Huskies lead the Beavers on Fox Sports. Washington seven Oregon State three Huskies with a football first and ten their own twenty two yard line and Corey Dillon will pick up maybe two Anthony Murray 
in on the stop. The last series, the Huskies really mixed it up well with the run, short passing game, quick hitters, so they don't allow all those attacking people from the Beavers to get to the quarterback, and they had some success doing it. Teams that have had the most success with the Beavers have thrown from three and five step drops, getting it out quickly to avoid the rush, or else just lined up with two tight ends and run it down the Beavers' throat. Heward on a three-step drop. Hathon with a painful <laughs> catch for wow. a gain of maybe four. Robert Ruffin made the stop. <laughs> so you mentioned the the relationship that Heward and Hathon have developed. And it's pretty obvious. He likes going that direction. Well, Jerome has made some outstanding catches this season. I mean, selling his body out, Steve. You know, they just, when they lay out or they do the right things and sell their body to make the catch, Jerome has done that. Well, he's going to end their relationship with him more like that. Uh, <laughs> he's telling Brock to bring him down a little bit. <laughs> Third down and two. Dylan might not have made it. In fact, I think the Beavers have held. Brian Rogers made the initial stop. And Brian Jones at the bottom of that pile as well. And I think Washington is short. Sure looks like it. Yep. And actually, a penalty flag down, illegal procedure against Washington. On the offense, decline. Fourth down. A little poker hand right there. The Huskies going to have to kick, but you never know with less than a yard to go. Washington faked a punt last week. Cam Kissel picked up a first down against USC. Twice in a row, the snaps bounce back, and the Beavers have not rushed. Let's see if there's an adjustment. Jerry Jensen is the long snapper, and he gets it to Sarshar, who then hits a line drive punt taken by Williams. Mark Williams! He's inside the 35 and down to the 33 yard line. The Washington punting game has been a problem all year long and Mark Williams with a gorgeous return. Well a lot of times this season Sharshar has had the punts like this but Williams did an excellent job coming up and feeling the football to give him a, ch a chance. And he's a, a great open field guy with very good speed. 27 yard punt 26 yard return that you're right Sonny that's a real key on that punt because if you catch it it doesn't roll usually that line drive will roll another 10 15 yards Oregon State good field position 33 yard line Alexander the keeper and Tim Alexander is inside the 25 down to the 24 yard line good tackle by John Fiala but there was a little glimpse of his quickness <laughs> I'm telling you <laughs> it's amazing. Last week he scored on about a 48 yarder and he looked like he was running away from people. As you look right here, here's what Sonny's talking about. Watch the speed. He just runs right by the linebacker. Last week he was coasting with the sore hamstring, still leaving people in his dust. You know, the best thing is he has to do it from a standstill. Mm -hmm. Here comes a blitz. Burton is picked up. Alexander going deep. Tompkins incomplete. And it will be second down and short. Tony Parrish on the coverage. You know, those type of routes are very difficult routes for a quarterback that isn't known for throwing. Those are some of the toughest routes to complete because you have so much distance in there, Steve. The receiver right here, look at the distance there. Where does the quarterback throw the football? Absolutely, and it seems like uh, he has good good ability to throw the ball on the out. I'd like to see the Beavers throwing the out and the curl a little bit more. Yeah, I was going to say, or just a simple curl route. Oregon State would like to gain just one yard here. Third down in a yard. Inside handoff, staying on his feet. Oh. King, but Fiala stops him at the 24-yard line. Fourth down and short, and quite possibly Oregon State will go for it. Looked like he had a made Steve with that second sure effort. Good job by John Fiala. We featured him in the pregame, and there's a reason why. This is a great run, actually, at the start here by Keila King. Look at that. He breaks loose. Bang. Great job by Fiala coming off the block. Oregon State has called a timeout. Jerry Pettibone wants to talk about this one. Fourth down and a yard now. Remember, the Beavers had a huge fourth down early in this football game. 
they had driven down to the Washington one foot line. They were faced with fourth down and goal from that one foot line and they failed to get in Alexander was stopped on a quarterback sneak had a bone in his sixth year as the head coach at Oregon State there have been glimpses and glimmers of light but so far this season it's been a dark tunnel for the Beavers one and seven and one and five well coach Lambright said in his uh, little bit early on in the, in the program it all comes down to scoreboard and the Beavers are in a lot of football games show a lot of promise but we have not been able to see the Beavers win many football games the last six years. Oregon State finishes the season against Northern Illinois and then Oregon. Washington will finish next week with San Jose State and then a rugged trip to Pullman. And that Apple Cup game is shaping up to be a very important game as far as postseason play. Let's see what Oregon State does. Fourth and short. King hit. Makes his lunge. I don't think he has it. And again, those Washington linebackers penetrated and stopped Oregon State. It'll be a Husky football. You know, I was always a believer. Jason Trorak, we haven't mentioned him today, Rich or Steve, but one thing on a short yardage, quickest handoff possible is the safest way. You see on this, he hands it off four yards deep in the backfield. Totally agree with you, Sonny. Get that ball to the big fullback. Let him bang it straight up the middle. Jason Chorak, the Washington Sports Information Department, has gone about issuing <laughs> paper sacks to the media now just to, I guess, illustrate the year that that man is having. Chorak, with 12 sacks, leads the conference. Not to be worn on the head, though, Rick. Not at all. Hewitt, little pump fake, going to try to get it deep for Paython, and it's incomplete. Double coverage. The Beavers. We're all over that pattern. Mark Williams and Andre Holland. Washington has had very little success throwing to Holland's side. As I mentioned, Oregon State's best cover man, Andre Holland. But this little fake on the hitch that has been used all season long against the Beavers with some success. Andre obviously doesn't bite there, and a great job by Mark Williams coming over from his rover position to back it up. I think you can sell a little bit more when you can see the football on the fake rather than just the shoulder fake. Second down and 10. On the pitch. Out to the 22 yard line. Jason Harris getting his first carry of the football game. Rashawn Sheehy will not play today. It may not play for a while. That heel that he had injured taking a long time to heal so to speak but Corey Dillon getting a drive off and Sonny that's something that Washington was able to do early when they had both Sheehy and Dillon was give one of those guys a break but not so lately Harrison motion on third and 12 Coleman the catch short of the first down good hit by Buster Illahi. Buster Illy was a freshman All-American at Oregon State three years ago, playing free safety now, was a cornerback, so he's got the great ability to cover. But there it is again. The one thing about it, you have to lead the, re the receiver. If he had led the receiver, it would have been a first down. Well, he had a hard time leading the receiver on his back. Brian Rogers <laughs> coming on the blitz. He had plenty of time to deliver the football. Sarshar. Sarshar might make a good shortstop because he had to short hop a bunch of them today. Williams makes the fair catch at the 25 yard line. Good punt. Oregon State with a football. The Beavers have moved the ball, but trail in the game. Huskies seven, Beavers three. Seven three Washington on top. Oregon State straight ahead. Derek Kirkman. Not much of a gain. And it's second down and ten. Jason Chorak made the stop. 
Oregon State has moved the ball. But you take a couple of fourth down plays that has really hurt the Beavers. I mean, if they stick it in the end zone and make that last fourth down, they might have a 10 7 lead and be on the doorstep right now. Same thing happened early year at USC and at Baylor. The Beavers have a chance to win the football game if they can just put points on the board. Deshaun Williams with a nice move to salvage a couple yards. Suki Wiggs made the stop for Washington. There's a look at Wiggs. Suki, of course, did not start the season in uniform. Injured during the spring in that incident with Olin Krutz. But he's starting to play a little bit more as the season goes along. There's a good good look at that defense, Stephen. That little option. Jerry Jensen has given a lick to the little quarterback Alexander every time. And you have to do that and make him a little shy as he starts pitching the ball Absolutely. in the third quarter. The option is so much timing, and, and the Huskies are now forcing the Beavers deep out of their option. It's going to kill them if they can't stay on the line of scrimmage. Inside toss to Todd Harris, or rather Deshaun Williams, who was split out. And Oregon State short of the first down. That's a gain of just about a yard. And the Beavers will have to punt. Doug Stuckey is on. Whoa, someone came in there late with a helmet chop on Alexander. You'll, you'll remember that little. Here's a good look at it right here, Steve. Ouch. Jason Chorak. Meanwhile, Payton on the punt return back to the 37 yard line. Good punt by Stuckey. And Washington will have the football. Their own 37 yard line with a 7 3 lead. Both defenses, we talked about them from the outset. Washington's overall second in the conference as far as yardage and against the run. Oregon State's defense may be underrated because they've played well this year and both of them are getting the job done. Brock Heward. And for the second straight series, Jason Harris is in a tailback. And Sonny, that leads me to believe that something might be wrong with Dylan, something wrong with the pass protection. Down goes Heward. Mark Williams with the sack. His second of the season for Oregon State. Great effort by Williams right there. Blocked it. Same time he made the hit. Watch him from the top of the screen. Whoa. Come on down. Get Boy. Brock's a big strong kid, but on those on that situation, he did the right thing. He held on to the football. It looked like he still wanted to throw it as he's going down. You're right, Mark Williams is one of the most active guys on that defensive squad. Senior Coca. On second down and long. Cleveland the catch. The big fella rambles out to the 42-yard line. Short of the first down. Elohi makes the stop. It'll be third down and about five. Remarkable grab here. Cam Cleveland. Brock is looking downfield, comes off his main receiver. Good job by a big boy to get down there and catch the ball. Ouch. <laughs> Both quarterbacks are taking their licks today. Cam Cleveland, 17 catches this year. Harris in motion. Blitz again. Heward hit as he throws. Flag goes down. So does Heward. And he might be hurt. And that's not good news for Washington. There was a real concern for the Huskies coming into this week that they protect Brock Heward because Shane Fortney's knee is in no shape to back up Heward. He's holding his knee, Rich. Then Olin Kruitz. Flags go down. And the real concern right now is the health and welfare of Brock Heward. Several more flags after the play. Oh. This doesn't look too good. Here's another look. Well, they've been coming after him all day. Looked like a clean tackle there. Certainly was. Yeah, clean shot. The first flag looked like a hold. It was. The first flag came before he had released the pass. The subsequent flags came after 
Heward was down. It did look like a, a clean hit, probably Absolutely. the turf. Turf Absolutely. just hooked it up. And Jim Lambright discussing things with the official right now. When a quarterback goes down and it's a knee injury, the first th thing you look for is if it was a low shot. But that hit came in at about waist level. And I think Heward was injured, not on the hit, Steve, but as he fell back into the pile. Against the offense, that penalty's declined. After the play, a dead ball, personal foul against the offense. The 15 yard penalty, a fourth down. You know, guys, I'm not so sure it was a knee. It could have been hitting his head on the turf as he went over that big pile. Seems to be walking off all right. <laughs> well, that, that, that certainly will brighten the day here at, in Seattle yeah. <laughs> to see him get up and walk off. Uh, if not, there was a nervous John Minter over in that Husky sideline. Yeah, that's the story. Minter is a guy that they wanted to redshirt with Fortney's knee. They feel that Minter, in fact, will play and, and they expected to play him in the second half of this football game. There's a look at Minter, the freshman out of Blanchett High School here in Seattle. Sarshar partially blocked. Flag goes down, but they may pick that flag up because I think that ball might have been blocked. If it was blocked, you can hit him. You know, Steve, you had mentioned with all those bouncing snaps to the punter, why don't they go after him? They certainly came on that play. Certainly came, and I believe there was a partial block, and they should pick this one up. Let's take a look. It's hard to tell with some of Sarshar's punts if they've been touched <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe they'll, they may burn Minter's red shirt year. Oh. And they'll say it was not blocked. Minter is also a punter, and they've contemplated using him in that situation. Let's see if the Beavers got a hand on it. I don't think so. I think they did. It's hard to tell from that angle. Everything's happening so fast, but. Yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Wow. I'd like to see another angle of that. Yeah, from this side, from the sideline. Would give us a better look, but you know, lucky the, break. the ball ended up near the sideline. Watch the trajectory off the foot and see where it starts. Ooh, I, I'm not sure. Deshaun Williams is the guy that, if anyone got a piece of it, it was Deshaun Williams. Correct. It was such a bad punt, they probably should have given it to the Beavers well, anyway. As I said, we've seen a lot of those come off the foot that look like that. And Heward is back, so obviously the injury not that severe. But the question I have right now is what's up with Corey Dillon? Because Harris is back in at tailback. Heward standing tall over and the middle. Janoski can't hold on, and it's incomplete. Washington wants pass interference. Mark Williams on the coverage, but it looked like Janowski simply got his feet tangled up with the Beaver defender. He's going to get some pressure from the guy you talked about, Brian Rogers, right there. It looked like a bad pass to begin oh. with. Three people in coverage, and Janowski, for whatever reason, fell down. Well, Mark Williams has an interception. Make the catch. The Beavers got decent field position again. Andre Dessischer has come in for Washington in a wide receiver spot. Kiaho and Harris in the backfield. Washington is living exclusively exclusively through the air, and it's Dessischer as I spit it out at the 22-yard line. Dessischer with his first catch of the season. Really the forgotten man of last year he had a great freshman season we haven't mentioned his name much this season but I tell you this guy has a lot of ability he's got flat out speed oh. made the catch corner undercut him didn't he Sonny? yes he did just ran under it uh, nice throw eight of 16. You know, all of a sudden, Washington is throwing, throwing, throwing in a team that has lived on the ground. There's a look at Corey Dillon. Now, it, he doesn't appear to be injured, just rather glum. 12 of 36. 36 yards on the ground. 
Well, he had a shoulder that was a little bunged up earlier in the year. In fact, he nursed it against the SC game last week, and and maybe it's a little bit of that that we can't see from here. Janowski in motion. Hewitt with time lobs it. Cleveland touchdown. Washington. Brock Hewitt to Cam Cleveland. Third time that that pair is hooked up for a touchdown this season. Well, I tell you, you go from everybody being silent that Brock Hewitt's down and out for the rest of the game. In three or four plays, there they're up with another touchdown. Yeah. Microcosm of Oregon State seasons. They're in it. They're in it. Something goes wrong, like the punt situation. Three passes later, two of them complete. Touchdown. Two big plays, 70 yards. The guy in coverage, Brian Jones, is normally a rush backer. Randy Jones with the extra point, and it's good. And you guys are right. A huge call on that roughing the kicker on a punt that wobbled and it, to most of us looked like it might have been touched. Washington takes that break and turns it into seven points. Watch Brock Hewitt on this play just laying it up nice and easy. Is he excited. Yes. He's still holding his stomach. So many of these this season for the Beavers, it's it's really uh, an amazing feeling to watch the Beavers who seem to be in these games. You, you kind of look up and expect it to be a, a pie or something sort, and, and instead it's a couple touchdowns back week after week. Oh. Seven plays, 63 yards, and of course the, the call right here, and we'll get another look at it, allowed Washington to keep the drive alive. Well, I don't know how it couldn't have been touched. I mean, it looked like it went right through about three white jerseys. Well, and also, if if it wasn't touched, the fullback blocks the box Dandridge into the kicker anyway, so it's a no call. So, interesting call in either regard. 22-yard pass, Heward to Cleveland. Eighth touchdown pass of the season for Brock Heward. Jones, this time, will kick it deep. Catcher from out of his end zone. Real trouble. Lost the ball. Washington's got it. Disaster oh, has struck. Boy. When they go bad, they go really bad. And things have turned that way for Oregon State. The Huskies will have the football inside the 10. Great coverage downfield, ripping at the football. We saw that last week, Steve, with Janoski being ripped by USC, coughing up the football. You got to protect it inside a minute to go before halftime. No question. Just Marcus Harrison made the initial hit. Nice effort there by the Huskies, but again, you just got to protect the football. This is a situation the Beavers can't afford to give up something else. Just a little down drought and bang. They could be down this thing 21 to 3. Jason Harris, the lone setback. There are 25 seconds left in this first half. Pure wide open is Cam Kissel. Touchdown, Washington. His first career touchdown catch. Pure gets off the canvas. And all of a sudden, Washington is up big. You know, it goes back to Armin Hatcher on the kickoff. He's so talented. Big yards returning, trying to do too much. Here, Brock Hewer taking advantage of it. Cam Kissel having three career days in a row now for the Huskies. To go from a close game to a big, big spread in less than two minutes. And what obviously has to be frustrating to Oregon State as Jones adds the extra point is the Beavers have played virtually even with Washington dominated at times in the first quarter and they look up at the scoreboard as they head to the tunnel and it's a 21 3 football game. You know one thing there's Cam Kissel first he has a career day receiving then a fake field goal last week this week a touchdown pass. But you know in these kind of games Steve when it's tight. 
it's either penalties a bad call or a turnover that really swings it in a hurry well they're always what do they say three to five big plays in a game that decide a game and it seems like the beavers lose those three to five <laughs> plays week in week out play pretty well other than that there's the touchdown to Kissel he had gone I think 30 some games without catching a pass in his Husky career he was the prototypical second tight end he always blocked they never threw to him finally a couple of weeks ago against the Oregon Ducks he caught his first two collegiate passes and now he's in the end zone and Washington leads 21 3 people love his work ethic though you know he's a guy that was a walk on and now has received a scholarship one of the many on the Husky program. You know, and ironically for Washington, the pooch kick, which has been a real terror to special teams coaches, that was not a pooch kick. Washington finally kicked it deep, and Oregon State fumbled on the return. And here's the pooch. Fair catch called for and made oh, man. barely at the 32 yard line. Oregon State just trying to survive this quarter. Adrian Woodson on the hands team made the fair catch Todd Johnson who helped force the fumble made the stop. Well that's why you do the pooch kick. <laughs> this is. thing these things can happen. And it has happened to the Beavers earlier in the year costing dearly early on but they they fielded the ball very well at Oregon State the last four or five games on the pooch but not today. There's a look at Woodson. Woodson played most of the second half of the Baylor game at quarterback just a month ago. One of four quarterbacks this season for the Beavers because of injuries. Darren Kirkman, the ball carrier, and the clock will run out on the first half. A dramatic U-turn in this football game. Oregon State playing well, an early 3-0 lead, and all of a sudden a wave of purple, and at half, it's 21-3 Washington. Halftime homecoming in Seattle and Washington leads Oregon State by a score of 21 to 3. Hi everyone, Rich Waltz back with Steve Priest and Sunny Six Killer. Guys, I mean, someone around the nation looks at this score, say on a halftime highlight show or on the ticker 21-3, no big deal. That does not tell the story of this football game. This is a very, very typical Oregon State first half this season. You know, ifs and buts, it's big play, big pay, big play for the Beavers. They play many games, they're right in it, but the score never says that because they can't find the people to make the plays. And Sonny, I guess the good news for Washington, Brock Heward, okay, that was a real scare. It was a scare. We didn't know if it was going to be the knee, the shoulder, the stomach, who knows what it was, but he wiped himself off the turf, came back and made some big pass plays. The amazing thing about this football game is that Oregon State, I thought, should have had a 10 to nothing lead from the outset. As we look at the highlights, this was Oregon State, fourth and short from the one, couldn't stick it in. Well, certainly the quarterback's got to go low if he's going to sneak from there, but I agree with what Sonny said earlier. Give it to those two big guys behind him and let them run. Washington then up 7-3 to three. at this point, a 14-3 to three lead, a touchdown pass to Cam Cleveland. Well, Brock has looked to Cam Cleveland all year. The biggest thing about this play, the Huskies moved it around to get him open. That came with 32 seconds left in the first half. This came on the next play, another big mistake. Uh, protect the football, protect the football. That's the whole thing that you're concerned with, that close to the half. It's a 14-3 game and the Beavers are in it if this fumble doesn't occur. And Brock Heward then would turn around and find not his tight end, Cam Cleveland, but his other tight end, Cam Kissel. Cam Kissel has been more of the offense here in the last three weeks, finally getting a touchdown for the first time, I believe, in his career. So those are the pictures from the first half, and I guess the real question here is, can Oregon State get back to where they were in the first quarter and maybe take advantage of some of their opportunities? Second half is coming up. Oregon State and Washington. It's the Huskies up 21-3.
full house on hand Husky Stadium 21 3 Washington on top of Oregon State the Beavers will get the football to start this second half though that's no bargain because the kickoff return team has had a lot of problems <laughs> one fumble they lost one fumble they recovered here are the numbers to look at Oregon State total yards 118 Washington 116 that's what I mean by that score does not tell the story of the first half. Well, in fact, if you take those couple of big plays at the end of the half, the couple of passes out of it, then it's fairly lopsided as far as statistics are concerned for the Beavers, but you'd never know at 21-3. Armand Hatcher back to return the kickoff. The other number that was interesting there, just 18 rushing yards for Washington, and the indication at halftime from the Husky sideline is that Corey Dillon's health is fine. The uh, Huskies are just frustrated with their inability to run the football. We saw Jason Harris on the last three series for Washington. I'm really curious to see how Oregon State responds here in the second half because the Beavers really had their moments in the first half. I guess both good and bad. Oregon State's history this season is that adjustments are made at half by the opposing team and they become very, very definitive in what happens in the football game. The Beavers have not come back, have not adjusted. In fact, if it gets out of hand, have a tendency to, to pack it in a little bit. Again, the pooch kick, and again, the fair catch at the 31-yard line. Jay caught with the fair catch, and so Tim Alexander and the Oregon State Beavers. Alexander had a very well-rounded first half. Four of seven. We saw the yardage as far as passing, 14 yards. Last year, 182 yards on the ground, but people don't realize he had 140 yards as well in the air. And since that game against Washington, Alexander has yet to get over the 100 yard mark throwing the football. He's gone eight games since then. And Oregon State on the ground to start things. Out to the 36 yard line, Darren Kirkman will bring up second down and about seven. Tim has only had four games since then where he's played the full game. He's always had injury problems, gets nicked up. He has gained 25 pounds since his freshman season, his true freshman season three years ago. Boy, that would put him at, at 150 as a true freshman. Well, he's, he's actually 188. Is he 188 now? On the pitch. King gets outside and gets to the sticks. He'll get the first down. Mel Miller made the stop. Good tackle by Mel Miller. Both cornerbacks for Washington are good tacklers. And they have really for Richard Freshman done coverage as well as anybody. But here's a good tackle by Mel Miller. This is what they need to do, I think, Steve, is do that. Mix it up. They did it in the first half. Take it wide. Let this guy operate like he can operate, and that's outside on the corners. I'm speaking of Tim Alexander. Yes, and I think that the dogs have, have learned from last year that you pit, make Alexander pitch the football. Yeah, that's a good strategy. Get it out of his hands. Out of his hands here and deflected and incomplete. Harris, the intended receiver. I think Nigel Burton got a piece of it just before it arrived to Todd Harris. Burton's made a lot of plays today. Again, you know, we talked about it, but look at the angle of the route. It's a corner type route, which is really tough. And he did get a hand on it. Well covered. Heck of a throw, Sonny. Yes, it was. You know, I think that you could design plays to make him successful. So do I. You know, uh, little in routes, little hook routes, stuff to give him a lot of confidence and then take it deep. He's got the arm. He, he is forced to throw very difficult patterns. On the draw, King. Close to midfield, John Piala made the stop. It's a gain of about five. It's hard for me to believe that a draw would be that successful against the Husky defense, which you know they're going to run the power eye, ISO, little trap counters, and option. You're going to have people up near the line of scrimmage. You know, you're not going to sell a drop back pass and run a draw. A lot of the standard offsets against the pass. The screen, too. The Beavers. Don't have many screens, don't see him very regularly. Alexander to the sideline, looking for Roddy Tompkins and overthrew him. Again, difficult pass to throw, has to time it perfectly. 
The pattern is designed at five steps, so Tim doesn't have the opportunity to look to the inside guy. Right here, he's got to throw quickly, gets hit. As the man opens up inside, he's there. And he's going from one hash mark to the far sideline. Doug Stuckey with the punt. Pathon with a fair catch at the 22-yard line. And so Washington will get their first drive at their own 22-yard line. Corey Dillon is back in. And Brock Heward, who apparently took that hit in the stomach, will answer the bell as well. Although I would not be surprised as things go along if we do see John Minter in the game. Well, I'll tell you, initially we thought it might have been a knee, but if you've ever had your wind knocked out of you, <laughs> you know, you do bring those knees up and try and get some air. Cam Kissel, who caught a touchdown pass in motion. To the air goes Heward. Dylan can't handle it, and it's incomplete. Second down and 10. Why has Washington abandoned the running game? Well, Oregon State defense has done a <laughs> tremendous job against the run. We knew that from the get-go coming in the ball game that they will attack all the angles and try and disrupt the offensive line blocking schemes and they've done a tremendous job doing it. How did they give up? How did Oregon State give up 297 yards on the ground to Arizona State? That's uh, amazing. Really, they were long runs. Long runs, big plays. Uh, Beavers would stop them. Uh, three out of four plays and the one play it would amount to 15 yards. Dylan right side gets outside. And Corey is out of bounds at the 28 yard line it's a gain of about seven I would suspect with a 21 three lead and especially if you don't want to I guess put your quarterback in danger this man's going to have to have a big second half but look at here you've got one man blocking four Oregon State defenders you're going to have a little bit more blocking out there to keep him healthy and get some yardage well I agree with what Sonny said earlier that the reason for the passing game and lack of running game is the Beavers have stopped it and I've got to hand some accolades to Washington's coaches they figured it out and they're throwing the football and been successful at least in the second quarter Andre Desisher who had a big catch in the first half is in Dylan goes in motion Heward Throws short, has his man. First down, Dave Janoski. At the 39-yard line. Lots of time for Heward, and he needed it because the pattern took a while to develop. Well, that's what happens when you have good blocking, but the other thing about it, you got Corey Dillon that went out to the flat. You got to respect that. Look at the blocking up front. They still got to him, but I tell you what, Nathan McAtree out the outside, 38. You didn't see it on that play. He's not going to be able to cover Corey Dillon one on one. I don't see pri be surprised if they go to Corey next time. Mm -hmm. Nathan has very good speed for an outside back. He runs four six. But you're right. Uh, he doesn't have the movement that a running back has. On first and ten, here's Dillon trying to cut it inside. Does and he'll pick up four yards. Tony Hewitt made the stop for Oregon State. Tim Alexander, there was a real concern, Steve, that if Oregon State fell behind in this one, that maybe Alexander would not finish the game because obviously the next two games, Northern Illinois and Oregon, high on the list of Jerry Pettibone. Well, I think the, the entire Beaver program once wins these last couple of weeks, but the biggest reason for that, the biggest concern was Tim's hamstring. The Beaver coaches were not sure that Tim could handle this with the speed play. Good inside block by Janoski. Freeze Heward. Midfield. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Dave Janoski coming from his wide receiver spot with a crack back block on what turned into a naked bootleg. Well, that's what happens when you get that penetration. You need to get more people in the blocking scheme. You'll see at the left side, Steve. About ready to get a hit. Janoski, the little guy, came up big. Mm -hmm. Wide open. Another nice, good block nice downfield. block outside. Brian Jones in pursuit made the stop. 15-yard run for Heward. At the Oregon State 40 now. Washington, their first possession, second half. Cam Cleveland in a crowd. Makes the catch. Nathan McAtee made the stop. Leland is, is really filling or fulfilling the legacy here at Washington of, of great tight ends and NFL caliber tight ends. That's true, and uh, he's a big target, but 
one thing that allows you to do when you have success with the tight end in those short routes, it'll soften up those guys that are being aggressive and attacking. And eventually, Steve, that's why they probably end up with some big runs. If they don't adjust or they throw the ball to the tight end. Second and five. Dillon to about the 32-yard line. McAtee made the stop again. As Sonny says, when you're playing defense in a system like Oregon State's where you're flying wildly all over the field, a little bit of doubt goes a disproportionate distance the other direction. You're a little bit slow because you're worried about the tight end, or you're a little bit slow because you're worried about the string, spring, and all of a sudden, bang, it's over. One thing that Jerry Pettibone's Beavers have done well today, though, is tackle the football. Washington has not popped a big play on the ground. Dillon has the first down, but he paid a price for it. Buster Elahi. Wait a minute. With a three-point takedown. Who paid the price? <laughs> I'm well, not sure who paid that one either, thing. Let's look at this and see who paid it. It's a good move right here to break it outside. Again, a missed tackle. You're right. Just low the shoulder. <laughs> well, Buster Illey, the free safety, is about 170, 75 pounds, and that's an ouch for Buster. But he stood in there and took it. Yes, that's, he did. He didn't go low either. First and 10, 29-yard line of Oregon State. Janowski, that's the same play. This time Heward throws and overthrows Coleman. Same look, opposite side. And this time the Beavers almost got to Heward and they covered it well. No coincidence, I think, that they went to the sideline of Andre Holland and he was there with the coverage. You gotta be careful in this type of blocking though on the little crack back. You that gotta was. make sure you stay up in the shoulder level. You see in the screen, you didn't. A little bit late out there to Freddie Coleman, but Jerome Payton was wide open underneath. And Heward took a pretty good lick as well. Yeah, a little chin music there. Oregon State has been able to get to Heward most of the day. Movement on second down and 10. Lynn Johnson jumped. He and Bob Sapp. Sapp is back after an absence of about three weeks. Second down and 15 now. There's a look at Sapp, the senior out of Colorado Springs. When Sapp joins this offense, he becomes just the second senior in the mix. He along with starting wide receiver Dave Janoski. Dillon's in motion. Heward lofts it up. Dessa sure can't make the catch. He let him that time, Sonny. He had a lot of pressure on him, though. I think he had to get rid of it a little bit quicker. Andre Dessa sure has great speed in the city of LA. He won some 100 and 400 meter dash championships. But again, the Beavers are applying great pressure. Beating Bob Sapp to the punch right there and getting some pressure on him. Nice throw. Beautiful. Great effort by Deschersher. Third down and 15. Yet another look. 56, Brechterfield, very tough. Coleman in motion. Heward upstairs again. Going deep. Python touchdown, Washington. Tremendous diving catch. That time he had the time, and he put it right on the money. Well, with the great effort by Jerome Payton as well. We talked about it, and here it is. Jerome's kind of the guy that, in the scheme of things, they go to on the long pass plays. Made the best of it, great grab, diving. Trying to figure out the defensive coverage there. It looked like they had people free in the middle at Oregon State, but uh, certainly nobody back deep enough to make any difference. Washington's first drive of the second half. 78 yards on 11 plays, and this was the finish. Jerome Payton from Brock Heward.
He absolutely turned Armin Hatcher in circles no on question. that coverage. Great, he sold the out, came back on the post pattern wide open. Ant answers our question about what coverage they were in at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three touchdown passes for that young man. The red shirt freshman leading the way. Washington on top of Oregon State. Twenty-eight three your score Washington on top of Oregon State nine forty three left in the third Rich Waltz Sonny six killer Steve Priest and Oregon State has dug themselves a rather large hole eleven plays seventy eight yards Payton a thirty four yard catch from Brock Heward. And again, Oregon State's uh, got some interesting statistics in that they're the third best in the conference for first downs allowed. It's funny. They go a couple of three good plays, good series, and then boom, 30 yards. Team never earns it down the field with 10 yards of the whack with the Beavers. It seems to always be the big play. Randy Jones getting set to kick off. Where he'll put it, no one knows, especially that <laughs> man. Armand Hatcher. That's the mystery with this pooch kick that Washington has made fashionable here in 96. This one is deep. The last one Hatcher returned he fumbled. He'll hold on to this one but Washington holds on to him. Brendan Jones made the stop. A 16 yard return with Washington in control 28 to 3. This has been a, a game of breaks. And for Oregon State, they've had a few breaks go against them, but they have not done a nice job of creating their own breaks. There's the total yardage. Washington, remember, things were fairly even until that last drive. The Huskies just ate mm -hmm. up 80 yards worth. Beavers have not been a good second half team. Alexander can change things in a hurry, and he's out to the 27 yard line. First time today that the dogs have let him run. Yes. Gain of about 12. I wouldn't let him run very often. <laughs> no, I don't think they need to get the clamps on him as soon as they can. Kirkman, though, selling that dive dig. And Alexander, that, you see right there, he's got so much talent. You can just see, and you can tell that he's a little bit hampered yet with that hamstring. King. Lost the football. Jerry Jensen. Washington says they have it. They do. Jensen on top of it. And the breaks continue to go against Oregon State. The Huskies force the fumble. And Washington with a 28-3 lead has the football at the Beaver 29. Can the Huskies stick it in again? We'll find out when we get back. Another Oregon State turnover. Washington up 28-3. Heward pump fake going deep. Payton there. Touchdown! Number four on the day for Brock Heward. Second time he has found Payton. 
The Washington coaching staff has done a good job. Armand Hatcher, 15, in there in coverage again. Brock Hewitt, nice little pump fake here, Steve, selling it. And absolutely was a perfect pass. And actually, Hatcher makes a pretty good move on catching up here. Dips his head. He's running hard. Got a chance. Now get there. Nice job by the receiver. Yes. Randy Jones adds the extra point. Hewer to Pathon. Jerome with two touchdown catches in the football game. Six now on the season. You know, this kid had to walk on here at Washington and convince the Husky coaches that he could play in the Pac-10. He spent his first year at Arcadia College up in British Columbia. And he has exploded on the scene this year as one of the big play receivers in the Pac-10 conference. He did a smart thing though. He sent his own highlight film down to the coaching staff. <laughs> you know, even though, even at that point, he still had to do a little bit of a selling job when he got here, Sonny. Yes, he did. Well, that's what happened. That's part of college football. Everybody grows and matures so quickly from 19 to 20, 21 years of age. And he has made the most of it. He's worked hard for it in the weight room and in school. He's done a great job. He's sure made some nice adjustments on the ball. Right at the end of three patterns now, he's made the right adjustment to make the catch. Deja vu all over again. Jones adds the extra point. 35-3. Washington on top of Oregon State. And I'll, you know, say what you want about the Beavers and turnovers, but Washington on the two Oregon State fumbles has scored on the next play. Yeah. Well, you look at what, six minutes in this half and about three minutes at the end of the first half? A lot of points scored. Absolutely. It was a 7 3 ball game nine minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Oregon State uh, scored on the first game of the season. Second half, two fumbles down inside the 30. Very next play, it's like sinking spell. Nobody steps up. Hey, I'm a, I'm a senior leader, a junior leader. It is a young defense, but they sure make some mistakes after big plays. Good stuff from our guys in the truck. Well, that was o Osei Lewis, linebacker coach at Oregon State. He was an all Pac-10 linebacker a few years, a few years ago, and he gets into these games. He's an emo emotional player. You may remember him, Sonny. He was a heck of a football yes, player. Yes, he was. That's what you have to do, though, Steve. You got to keep challenging them no matter where they are. It's 35-3, nine minutes to go, but you got to keep them focused and keep them fired up. Well, Oregon State, uh, under Jerry Pettibone has not been a team that quits. That's one thing I have to hand them with a couple of the records um, that they put together. They still play every game. Rarely have we seen them quit and stop hitting. Jones is simply going to kick this one as far as he can. Hatcher is four yards deep and he'll stay there. And the Beavers will put it in play from their 20 yard line. Alexander goes down and goes down hard off the handoff to Kirkman. Well, you see Tim going down. He's on the ground. I'm really surprised. As much as Oregon State's coaches were concerned with him and his hamstring, I'm surprised he's in the game. Probably just the way you suggested it. They want to get something going at Oregon State, trying to prove they can get back, get their rhythm back here before they start bringing in anybody else. Here's a look. Ouch. <laughs> you know, and that's one thing when you run the option, wishbone, veer, or run it out of the eye, the quarterback is vulnerable to getting hit because with ball fakes, he's fair game. No question. And Alexander is headed to the sideline. He may be done. We'll find out when we get back. Washington 35, Oregon State 3.
35 3 Washington on top. And Tim Alexander's day looks to be done. David Moran the freshman out of Prescott Valley Arizona is in. And he'll keep it get back to the line of scrimmage. Obviously a busted play and it's third down at about 10 and Steve. I mean I think the reason Alexander there's two reasons he's not in the football game reason number one the hamstring not 100 percent but Northern Illinois and Oregon coming up in two weeks. No no question the Beavers need to win those games to keep this program spinning positively and Tim Alexander is a guy who can win them. This young guy who's in now David Moran really a story came on four weeks ago gave up his red red shirt year nine thousand yards in high school scored 74 touchdowns in the air and another 25 running the football quite a talent and a much better or you consider him a better thrower than Tim Alexander can throw the touch pass has a lot of different kinds of throws that he can make must be frustrating for Alexander to be standing on the sideline right now this time Moran a little too strong for Roddy Tompkins well, and certainly you, you have to have a couple of seconds to throw the football if you're going to throw it. Payton has made some great catches as a wide receiver and maybe some better ones on fair catches. Flag goes down. I don't know if the Beavers gave him the obligatory yardage. <laughs> well, it's tough to do, and it's tough on that. Guess. Oregon State defender going downfield. Pat Flood, five yard, uh, two yard belt violation on the kicking team. Be a five yard penalty, first and ten. I agree with you, Sonny. It's a hard one to call that penalty on a kick like that when the receiver is running. Surprising. Now, Washington with the football in Oregon State territory, 35 3, seven and a half left here in the third quarter. Brock Heward, four touchdown passes, two to Payton and two to Cam. One to Cam Cleveland, one to Cam Kissel. This is Corey Dillon. And Dillon really for the first time busts loose for a gain of about 15 yards. Nathan McAtee made the stop. If Oregon State can take something out of this football game, Steve, it's the fact that they've held this man in check for one half and most of this third quarter. No question. And, and you can see right now in that play, it appears the Beavers are a little bit less aggressive than they were stopping the run the first half. Does it look like that to you, Sam? Yes, it did. But they've also done a good thing. making You try to make a team one-dimensional. Husky 67 yards now rushing. They've done, they've done that. But Brock Heward has been successful with the throw. Mm -hmm. Dylan in a crowd. Picks up maybe four. I guess the other question about Oregon State's defense with the offense three and out the defense has been on the field a whole bunch here in these last 15 minutes the tail end of the second quarter and here into the third. Well, I, I have never quite agreed with that philosophy because it seems like the if your defense is on the field all that time the other team's offense is on the same amount of time and they seem to be doing it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Second down and seven. Dylan. Bob Sapp with a one block, two blocks, three blocks. Dylan. Touchdown. Oh, man. And the man that got him there pulls him off the ground. Corey Dylan with a touchdown run brought to you by Bob Sapp. It's great to have a guy like Bob Sapp back in the lineup because he's the fastest offensive lineman that the Huskies have. But really, give a lot of credit right here. There he goes, the big fella coming around, 72. Steve, right here, Corey Dillon made a good move just to follow that big guy. And look at him, push yeah. guys around. He's strong. Nice effort getting the goal line. Wow. He made three blocks, and he stayed neck and neck with a speedy tailback. Not bad for a... A guy that goes at 295. The extra point is good. Washington in control. 42 3 now. Dylan finally busts loose. And it's got to be a big relief for that young man. You can just see it. He had a very frustrating first half. It's good to see that Brock Heward has taken over a real leadership role. Not only is talking with Corey Dylan, see, that's the way you got to play the whole ball game. 
but also Randy Jones on the last kickoff came out and gave him a high five and that's a real real leader in the making out there Steve I'm very impressed with him as a redshirt freshman wow and I'm very impressed with this guy with his 16th touchdown this season wow that's it look at even Bob Sapp is high stepping down towards the goal line <laughs> Did you see Dylan just <laughs> shove Andre Holland off his, off his tackle? Wow. That was the best hit of the run. Sap on Dylan, pulling him off the turf. <laughs> That's what they mean by get on that guard's hip and stay there. <laughs> and Corey Dillon with that touchdown run has set an all-time single season record for the University of Washington. 16 touchdowns for Dillon. This only the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> 47 yards, three plays, all of them featuring Corey Dillon. The Huskies have found a kickoff. Randy Jones, Hatcher, out to about the 20 yard line. Brendan Jones made the stop on the special teams. And now the Beavers will try to salvage something. Jim Lambright has been smiling most of the day. <laughs> the reason he's smiling, he had Marcus Harrison, 27, down there on, on the tackle. On the previous tick, kickoff, he took out the three up backs. That's your only salvation run on that kickoff coverage oh, team, boy. Steve, is, is knock some heads and knock some people around. Uh, we'd like to see this young man unleash the arm a little bit. Now he's had a chance to warm up. Mm -hmm. Last year, he came off cold off the bench. That's a lot of yardage, Steve. 9,000 yards. Yeah, isn't that something else? Wow. Ooh. Now, Oregon State has substituted a couple of offensive linemen right here. See Larry Ramirez in a left tackle. He was the starting tight end for the Beavers a year ago in their wishbone offense. He's moved to left tackle. He's in. Probably see a couple of other Nick offensive linemen get a little rest right now. But David Moran brings a different kind of offense. You'll see more play pass, more pass directly between the tackles. Straight ahead, tough going. Out to about the 20 yard line. Kirkman the carry. Suki Wiggs in on the stop along with John Fiala. There's a lot of young people on both sides of the ball out there getting some valuable time. And if you can get some people in this type of ball game, it's going to make you a little bit stronger. Although the Huskies haven't got John Fiala out of the game yet. <laughs> Rack up those tackles. First back through, short of the first down. Moran got crunched on that run by Derek Brain, the sophomore. Derek David Moran's first appearance for Oregon State. He came in in the middle of the third quarter against Cal, created about 300 yards in a quarter and a couple of overtimes in total offense. You saw Alexander there on the sideline. Moran is in. One question I would have, what type of tailback would he make? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't question his speed, that's for sure. Very close to the first down. Very good adjustment by Mel Miller on that play. I thought the tailback after he got the pitch would have the first down easy. Kobe Davis, I think this is the first playing time this year for Kobe Davis, who came into Oregon State as a wide receiver. As his red shirt uh, years passed, he moved back into the backfield where he was in high school, got very good speed. Mel Miller made the stop. Payton back, Stuckey's right leg has had a lot of action. This was a rather nonchalant fair catch for Payton compared to what he's done today. And Washington will put it in play at the 37 yard line. I don't want to downplay the talent of Alexander as a quarterback because he's a. I mean he, he really is a weapon but I mean I guess the question is. 
can he play the tailback spot? And and what Oregon State think about that? Well, you never know. I think Jerry Pettibone's position has always been Tim Alexander is his quarterback. He creates tremendous problems for other people. But what we've seen in the last couple of years is that people can play defense on Tim Alexander running the option. Not as easy this year as they could in the wishbone. The wishbone, they could pretty well dictate where Tim ran the football. But uh, the question as to whether he'll play another position, I don't think so. I think Oregon State's going to move him towards a better throwing offense in the years to come. Well, my question is with his quickness and his speed and having a need for a good cornerback on defense, could he play defense? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know whether that's even a possibility. I'm sure he could. I'm sure he could play the corner, but Tim Alexander is who Jerry has uh, rested his position on, on on the offensive side of the football. And as long as Oregon State continues to run option football with Jerry Pettibone's offenses, um, Tim's going to be the quarterback. Speaking of new quarterbacks, John Minter is in for his first snaps as a Washington Husky. Corey Dillon out to the 44-yard line. Minter, we talked about him in the first half when we saw Heward go down, but Minter out of Blanchett High School is a guy that has entered the program and, and with the injury to Shane Fortney, Fortney will undergo knee surgery here in a few weeks. Washington needs Minter ready just in case Heward goes down this week, next week, and in a bowl game because they really don't have anyone behind Heward that has any experience. And Fortney will not be available for that postseason game. Dylan will be available, and he's out of bounds at the 39 yard line. Buster Illahi again over there meeting Corey Dillon, not being able to knock him down, did knock him out of bounds. Not faint hearted. <laughs> no. Oh boy, what a load. Nice move right here. See, look at that. He can bust it outside if he needs to. His M.O. in most games is straight ahead power game, but uh, he can bust it out. Rashawn Sheehy, who is not playing the Husky running back, he's a guy that would scare you busting it outside because he can flat move. Dylan getting closer to Napoleon Kaufman's record of 1-3-9-0. If he stays on pace, he should do it either against San Jose State or at Washington State. Minter goes down. The ball was loose for a moment and he fell back on top of it. Brian Jones was on top of Minter. Sonny, what do we know about uh, John Minter? John Minter, I saw him play in high school at Blanchett High School. He's a very talented young man. He was real thin in high school. He's put on a little bit of weight. Very agile, uh, can move around in the pocket a little bit. Strong arm. He also can punt. So you never know. I mean, they burned the red shirt year already, or it looks like it. And uh, we'll see how he can be two dimensional. And a true freshman getting some snaps right now. Jason Harris straight ahead on second down. A gain of maybe two. This is the stage of the game that you really want to, we've said it many times this year, but you really want to run the clock. And for a couple reasons. One, you want to get off the field. You think you have a safe win, hopefully. But you don't want to look the other team down. You know, they may come back and score some points, but you want to be positive with it. And I guess the other thing is you want to be able to get your regulars like Corey Dillon, who's gone for 125 yards, get them to the sideline and get to next week without any injuries. I agree with you there. Yeah, that's a good point. Jason Harris, little dippity do. Brian Rogers made the stop for Oregon State. Fourth down now and about 12. And so Washington will punt. Well, you, you look at that time clock, and we're virtually one quarter to the point this was a 7-3 game. I would, yeah, he's right. And at the point where it was 7-3, it should have been 10-7 Oregon State. No question. Because the Beavers had ample opportunity to stick it in the end zone. Sarshaw. That rolls into the end zone. And it will come back out to the 20 yard line. Brendan really Jones down there on the special teams. I want to get back to the Tim Alexander. And I'm not, and, and again, in, in the option, 
it seems that Washington did an effective job of keeping the ball out of his hands, which is the reason you have him at quarterback, because it keeps the ball in his hands. Well, teams who see Tim once on film know that you got to take it out of his hands. So by continuing to run the option without the bootleg, without the sprint out, um, it's giving the defense a tremendous advantage. Many, many times Tim has looked good in the first half and adjustments have hurt him. Could he play another position? Um, you know, I, I've already talked to you about that and Jerry Pettibone's position is no. There have been some fine quarterbacks in this league and, and over time who've gone to that. Chuck Levy a couple of years ago at Arizona, um, an outstanding tailback who started out as a quarterback. Um, but I think Tim will be a quarterback in or at Oregon State for as long as he can play. Not playing right now. Beavers will finish their season against Northern Illinois and against Oregon. David Moran, the freshman, has taken over. And Oregon State still trying to establish something. Moran with time. And he introduces himself to Ink Aliaga at the 25-yard line, or maybe the other way around. The, another thing I'd point out about Tim as a quarterback, he, he's got a much better arm than people are seeing. This is a very, very difficult pass offense that Beavers run. The passes are difficult, the, the routes are difficult. It's not a drop back type of system. It's tough for anybody. Which begs the question, does the offense change with Moran in? Are the plays, the selection different? Well, certainly the plays are different. Um, he does not run the option like Tim does, so you will not see the down the line type option stuff on a regular diet. Three quarters in the book, and I promise I won't bring up Alexander again. <laughs> Washington on top, 42 to three. Forty two three Washington on top of Oregon State along with Steve Priest and Sonny Six Killer. I'm Rich Waltz. Just a gorgeous day here in Seattle and early morning fog had kind of shrouded Husky Stadium. It burned off right before kickoff. And right now Oregon State trying to get themselves out of a fog. The catch on a nice throw by David Moran. Matt Davis made the catch. Matt was Oregon's player of the year, high school player of the year a couple of years ago. Came to Oregon State as a running back and uh, in the swing from the wishbone into a more multiple offense. Uh, he has moved to the wide receiver position. Doug Stuckey to boot it away. Haith on the catch. He'll finally get to return one. Out to the 30 yard line. After three quarters, a 42 3 Washington lead. Wow. Numbers have kind of grown in a real hurry. Boy, they sure have. Two turnovers, that's obviously a big factor. But yes, from an even game to this in a quarter. Beautiful. That Sunday's right Brock. home. <laughs> hey, if Brock Fury keeps going the way he's doing, he's going to have a couple of those. <laughs> I just am impressed with the way he came back after being on the turf and the Husky coaching staff going to the air when they needed to. John Minter back at quarterback, his second series. Dylan. Another 10 yards. As he approaches 150 on the day. There's a look at Heward. Four touchdown passes today. 12 on the season now. Steve, he's got a little brother in high school at Puyallup, but also is throwing quite a few touchdown passes. Luke, Luke Heward. Quite a legacy. In that yeah. family. You know, his older brother, Damon, is working with the Football Northwest group, Paul Allen's group in the process, many people hope, of purchasing the Seahawks. And 
Dillon works his way out to the 47 yard line. And I guess the ironic thing there is this stadium has been talked about as a possible site for the Seahawks. You can't find a more beautiful place to watch football. Game. Seahawks of course played a couple games here two regular season and two exhibition games two years ago when the Kingdom roof blew a gasket so to speak. <laughs> Washington out to the 47 yard line guys if you're Jim Lambright right now and you've got John Minter in you obviously don't want to throw deep and, and, and rub it in the face of Oregon State but you want to get your quarterback some game experience and that includes throwing the football. How do you do it. Well the success of the Huskies so far today before the long touchdown passes was throwing short controlled routes and that's one thing you can get John Minter you got to tie it in get him involved. Jason Harris involved there and he's out to midfield short of the first down it'll be third down and short. I agree with Sonny you basically stay in your offense and the offense that was successful until those couple of bombs in the third quarter was a controlled passing game. And now the way uh, your tailbacks running. That looks pretty solid for the Huskies. That's quite a step though to be running the scout team. And all of a sudden you're all you're taking a lot of snaps in practice and working with guys you're not used to working with. Kissel in motion Harris might have been stopped. Good penetration by Oregon State. Maybe a yard on the carry. Shane Fortney of course but when you go back to the Arizona State game Fortney the starter really has been a tough luck season for Fortney tweaked his knee at the end of a brilliant performance against BYU and the knee never quite healed and he will have surgery which will end his season. In fact they will take a piece of an Achilles tendon from a cadaver and put it in his knee. But I don't think the story of Shane Fortney is done yet here at Washington. I think next year he will push Heward for the starting job. Well <laughs> if he wants to transfer I know where he can go. Yeah I, I think uh, it's too early to call and all that that's next spring but uh, two people that will contribute again next year will be Shane Fortney and Rashawn Sheehy. That's the other guy you're right. On first and ten Harris across midfield which brings me uh, to another question here Steve. Arizona State that's where Washington started the season lost by three you saw the Sun Devils last week you're watching Washington this week where are they at this point as we do see Sheehy on the sideline well it's you know it's hard to tell Arizona State left three or four players home last week they hadn't had a bye, so it was not their best shot uh, the way the Huskies are playing today I don't think there's any question this is the best defense that Oregon State's seen in a long time. And uh, offensively, I think Washington State's or Washington, excuse me, excuse me, Sonny. Washington's coaches have made some super adjustments. They have taken what the Beavers have given them and basically run it down their throat. And now they've come back to their game plan a little bit. They've, they've really made good adjustments. And I, I saw that last week against uh, Arizona State. Uh, certainly, Jake Plummer wasn't Jake Plummer, but they managed to win. They found ways to win. Ended up nine and zero, I believe, after the game. Well the smiles are out right now for those wearing purple because Washington in control. 12 15 left in this football game Washington on top big. Forty two three Washington on top. Second and ten. 
John Minter to the air and just as Sonny prescribed he hits his tight end Jeremy Brigham. Way to go Sonny good call. <laughs> well it's uh, the simple things like that will give the young man confidence just like Brock Hewitt a few games ago. You know we saw what happened at Notre Dame who come back and give him some confidence throws and then you're able to loosen him up a little bit and throw it downfield a little bit after that. John's a big kid also. You know, we talk about Brock Heward being tall. John's a pretty tall boy himself, and it's easy to throw those little outs when you've got the height. 6'6", 180 is how he is listed. Harris trying to gain some yardage. Leaps over the 40, lands at the 38-yard line. It's like he got another first down by Nice. Yeah. I think he could have had some other big yardage if he had an elite. Uh, it looked like he just stayed on the ground. He had a couple avenues to take, but he got the first down. That was his number one job. Well, the postseason picture for Washington will be an interesting one. And you know, it, it may not be until early December that the Huskies know where they're going because the Cotton Bowl situation is very different this year. And I'll get to it in a moment. On first and ten. Harris again out to the 38 yard line. The Cotton Bowl has their choice of the WAC champion or the number two team out of the Pac-10 conference. And if BYU continues as they do, they're a nice candidate. And although Wyoming got their first loss in the WAC. Washington, if they finish strong, is certainly a deserving candidate. And remember, the two teams met in Jim Lambright's Huskies had their way with BYU here at Husky Stadium. Well, Steve Sarkeesian from BYU will remember that day. Team record sacks by the Huskies. Minter to the air, and this time he overthrows tight end Cam Kissel. The flip side of that is this. The team that does not go to the Cotton Bowl out of the uh, WAC or the second place team in the Pac-10 goes to the Holiday Bowl. Let's see. Frozen ice, rain, sunshine. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, I don't know. Dallas is where this team wants to go. Well, now, Steve's son is going to San Diego in college, so <laughs> we'll have to get a weather report from That's him. That's right. It's supposed to be 90. <laughs> There's one of those winds blowing through there. Third down and 10. Terry Holloman gets his first carry of the ball game to the 33 yard line. Aaron Wells, another young Oregon State lineman. They're playing two or three now, uh, giving them a lot of playing time. Sean Ball, Aaron Wells, of course, from Breckford Field is a, a true sophomore. Sarshar will punt. I wonder if they'll let Minter punt before too long. I mean, now that they've decided to let him play in the burn the red shirt year. Fair catch made by Oregon State. Buster, or check it, Mark Williams with the fair catch. And so the Beavers now at their 13 yard line. The kind of pass offense Washington's run the last two series that we've talked about, Senator, the, the quick ass with the tight end, the receiver, the wide receiver, the out, the slant, those types of things are the kind of passing game you'd think you'd see from the Beavers in this situation, but we at Oregon State have not seen it um, this year. It's still the same kind of I formation as you see now, sprint out, half roll, three step, five step, but never uh, a straight drop back. Moran's throw almost complete. He overthrew Matt Davis. There was an example of it right there, but good job by Davis to turn it upfield to give your quarterback an opportunity. Uh, he was open early, but Moran not having time because of the pressure from Lang right there from the Huskies, and now he had to get rid of it after he had turned upfield. You'll see it right there in the near sideline. Pretty nice throw, actually. It was. Alex Hollowell in the coverage for Washington. Mentioned a couple of three times Moran put it out there where nobody could catch it. Let him. Yeah. 
first man through Derek Brame to the 30 yard line 15 yard pickup Brame just a sophomore out of Portland he's a good one very good one seen a lot more playing time as the heir apparent at fullback when Darren Darren Kirkman graduates this year big strong guy right there Brendan Jones having a hard time bringing him down now, Davis right there had a lot of playing time in 95 this year not be able to get in there to crack the lineup very much Davis now to the 32 yard line Kobe Davis quick quick feet as I said earlier this is the first time I've seen Kobe Davis this year on the football field and he does have quicks yeah he showed it right there now Moran being a shorter type quarterback too Steve could he throw from the pocket well it's it's difficult as you know when you're under six feet back there with the size of these players today but he has the kind of arm that he can run the can throw the ball with touch he can throw it long he can throw it on a line and he can run the football at times as well he picks up nine out to the 42 first down Oregon State 840 left in this football game 42 3 Washington one thing David Moran does very well is he runs the team on the field well. he's a coach's son has been uh, seemed like seemingly a quarterback for life he really looks calm out there for a redshirt a true freshman thrown into the breach he's really uh, acted like an older player Davis Lester Towns made the stop out across the 45 yard line this is good though I think the Beavers are doing a good job of gaining some positive with the rush now if you go strictly to the passing attack and you got three incompletes you're out yes you know so they're starting to build some positive right here I can see well I think that's what you have to do in this situation is take something positive from it you mentioned don't come in and throw three drop back that well they don't have a drop back back you come in and three incomplete passes and you're out of the game defense back on the field see Raheem Muhammad who is senior captain he is the third quarterback for the Beavers an option style quarterback I'd be surprised if Raheem plays much uh, with David Moran having this kind of success straight ahead tough going well then that was the uh, triple option right there and just you know it goes back to the wishbone era here that uh, was until la uh, this season started Oregon State has believed in that system when they call the option in the huddle or the, the triple option um, the quarterback reads it reads it on the move and that that means fullback gets it at fullback says open third down and six Moran to the air incomplete Kobe Davis the intended receiver and it's fourth down for Oregon State they will punt there's an example though of the height thing Marcus Harrison in coverage out there the linebacker forced Moran to throw it over the top and he just threw it too high mm -hmm. he actually had two guys open out there in the same area no question both open and I think you're right the height difference makes big time difference in that play. flags down Joe Jarzenka flag goes down this will come back Jarzinka scoots out of bounds at about the 45 yard line Joe having a, a great time until he looks back and sees two flags on the ground he is having some fun oh he's having a great time <laughs> well well liked young man from the Husky team and you'll see it coming up a little contact well, actually, the right Beaver there. fell right there. That's that drew the flag, or one of the flags. Well, yeah, there's two or three down there. <laughs> it's fun to watch Joe run. He's, uh, as I said, well-liked guy, but he's got a lot of enthusiasm. He's, he's ready to run forever. He also has a lot of hair. <laughs> he does have a lot of hair. You know, that was uh, that was in vogue here a few few years ago. Janoski, Dave Janoski used to have the long locks. 
Then Eric Bjornsson have the, the same mane as well. Yeah. Sonny, of course, you had that long hair going as well. Hey, that was the, that was the way. It, uh, I, it was kind of funny. A guy at uh, I saw recently had an old boy's life, and he goes, <laughs> "Wow, you guys really had long hair." In those days. <laughs> Pat Flood had a lot of work going on down there. His arms were, I'm not sure what he was doing. It never happened. Nigel Burton almost blocked that punt. And Jarzinka gets another crack at it. And there goes Joe again. And down he goes and there's another flag. <laughs> Clip on the far side of the field, I believe. He does want the football, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He's the type of guy you like to have in your program because he can do a lot of things. He's a good little possession wide receiver. He'll play well on the special teams. Ten yards against Washington. It'll back him up. Aaron Dalen and the rest of his Washington cohorts getting back out there. You know, it's nice. It's been nice to see Andre Dessischer contribute in this football game, Sonny. He's been in the game. He's run some good patterns, made a nice catch. He needs to uh, make sure he stays on the same page with the playbook sometimes. I know that in practice. He's working hard towards that. I think he's going to be a real contributor before he leaves. Remember, he's only a sophomore. Jason Harris, the carry. Six and a half minutes left in this football game. 42-3, Washington. And we saw a picture of Aaron Dalen, 75, offensive tackle. Steve last week against SC he stepped in and really had a good ball game. Young man out of Port Angeles or Squim actually uh, watching over on the peninsula. How many of the players at Washington are from the state of Washington? I'm not sure that the right number. One thing they have done is tried to recruit some of the top players out of the state. They, they try to recruit Seattle on out. They don't go out and come back in. And, uh, Exact number I'm not real sure of, but they have got a ton of them. A lot of people getting some time right now. Aaron Dalen, who did a nice job filling it. You know, Washington had a spate of injuries in the offensive line the last three weeks with uh, Mustafa Sobe going down, Bob Sapp going down, Ben Cadlitz went down. Third down, five. Harris outside with the first down and out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. You know I was just going to say even with the ball game the way it is with a lot of as you said two and three teamers in there Oregon State still playing that tough defense. They, they still play. They're still aggressive. They, 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 these kids do stay in it. They tackle. They hustle. Uh, you'll see a drop off. Uh, as the game goes back, and I guess that's human nature. It's tough when you're down here by um, five, six touchdowns. Well, Mr. Beaver there had it. He's got 100% on his chest, so uh, <laughs> I think that's indicative of these players, no matter what the score is, they're still doing it. You know, you hear that from just about every Pac-10 program you talk to about Oregon State, is that that's a team they would rather not play because the Beaver players are extremely tough. No, they are tough, aggressive. That's the Jerry Pettibone side of this program that has really grown. And that's these kids are tough individuals and give it 100% effort. They work like the staff does. 42-3. Washington on top. John Minter getting some directions from Bill Diedrich. I think it was, uh, well, we'll take a timeout. Minter on his way back in. We're on our way out. Back after this. On top of Oregon State, Rich Waltz, Steve Priest, Sony Six Killer, and the band. 
Five eighteen left. Forty two three in a football game that really was decided in about a, a twelve minute window there the tail end of the second quarter the start of the third quarter and since of the late stages of the third quarter Washington's been trying to run out the string. I think you analyzed it correctly Oregon State uh, in a football game but but that is how the Beavers have been all year long in the football game right around half or just uh, just before half or just after the half it sort of disintegrates. Minter Harris out to the 40 yard line. Oregon State uh, as you say has not won many against the Huskies. They've not won many in, in, in at all uh, this last few years or this last many years but the third quarter has traditionally been the absolute killer quarter. 20 points for the Beavers all season long in the third quarter versus 97 for the other side before today and that's uh, obviously considerably more. You saw Dick Erickson on the phone apparently I'm not sure who he was calling but I'm sure Dick was on campus for that football game. Dick has been around a long time. Great crew coach here at the UW and uh, I believe he works in facilities now Rich so he, he's out here all the time working the crew making sure everything's running right at the stadium. He's in charge of the 10 yard line today. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> he's done a nice job of that. He didn't have coffee and a donut. You know? Maurice Shaw with that last carry ball at the 48 yard line of Oregon State. I think he was calling to check on the 20 yard line. <laughs> Make sure it was still there. George Kiaho out to the 45 actually Anthony Hicks my mistake. Kiaho wears 25 Hicks of course. If you're scoring along with us. Is number 26. The uh, ship has left the port, so to speak. And Washington will get ready next week for San Jose State. Oregon State, by the way, as well, has a week off of Pac 10 play. They've got Northern Illinois. Flag down, movement. By Jerry Pettibone's former employer. At Northern Illinois, had a very Ball, successful six start. years there. Still second down. Just prior to coming to Oregon State, learned the program and ended up with a winning record in six seasons. That's certainly not an easy school to get it done, because it, Northern Illinois has not had much success, success since Pettibone left. Washington keeping it on the ground keeping the clock rolling two and a half minutes left in the football game and the Huskies next week Sonny with a situation San Jose State coming in the Spartans with their venerable coach John Ralston have not been real impressive this year Washington has though total yardage 411 to 221 but next week will be an interesting week for the Huskies. Well it's going to be a very memorable one for all those seniors. How many do we have five six. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of seniors on this team Steve and it's the last home game and it's always tough. You never know when you play a team like San Jose State and as you know you can't get overconfident playing anybody. Any chance any of your younger players will consider going on to the big leagues next year. Well you know the question came up when Corey Dillon had his breakout season as Maurice Shaw carried the football but Dylan quickly this week scotched any of those rumors and said I'm here for two years. He's a local kid. Franklin High School then went played a couple years of junior college ball. So it sounds as if Dylan is back here for his senior season. Flags go down. Next year, offsides on the defense. Still fourth down. Next year, both of these teams will have uh, some of that youth 
get a little bit older because the Beavers don't lose a whole lot of guys either from this year's club. No, uh, the Beavers very, very underclassmen heavy. Uh, speaks well for next year. They need a, the Beavers need a couple of uh, big defensive linemen, some help in the offensive line. will recruit heavily into the JCs this offseason to come up with uh, those, that kind of help. Nick Taronis with the punt down to the 13. And Oregon State will put it in play at the 13 yard line. 42 3 Washington on top of Oregon State. Forty two three Washington on top of Oregon State. Raheem Muhammad will run the club to finish things out. There's a first down for the Beavers. Washington with this win will improve their record to seven and two six and one in the conference the Beavers will fall to one and eight one and six in the conference Washington will keep their Rose Bowl hopes alive they need a lot of help they either need a two losses or a loss and a tie from oh, I guess you can't get those anymore my mistake <laughs> that was last year with USC Mike Jaycott's first carry of the season for the Beavers two plays ago. We've seen Jaycott on special teams. Muhammad kept it, now pitches it. And it's sort of a circuitous route that Kobe Davis runs to get to the 36-yard line. Gain Rah of about uh, six. Raheem Muhammad can run the option. He is technically, uh, he runs the option better than anyone else in the system. He's continued to play through his entire four years. Started as a freshman uh, in, against USC. Had a good, good game four years ago, and has continued to always come in and play well. Jaycott straight ahead, and we're done. Jim Lambright on his way across the uh, field to greet Jerry Pettibone. Oregon State played Washington tough for about two quarters and then things got out of hand and the Huskies will walk away with a 42 to 3 win. A happy homecoming from Husky Stadium and four touchdown passes from that man doesn't hurt. Washington beats Oregon State. Some final thoughts after this. Husky Stadium, a good homecoming if you are wearing purple. And Washington wins it by a score of 42 to 3 over the Oregon State Beavers. Hi again, everyone. Rich Waltz along with Steve Priest and Sonny Sixkiller. We'll start with you. How do you pick up the pieces if you're Oregon State? Schedule. Northern Illinois next week. It's a whole <laughs> lot better than, than playing the dogs. And incidentally, the dogs are my pick as the best team in the Pac-10 right now. Much better in Arizona State when you see the full package. Yeah, you saw Arizona State last week. Washington impressive this week. They have to be happy Washington 
with the uh, weekend of Brock Heward? Well, I think Brock Heward coming in, we thought it was going to be Corey Dillon, Corey Dillon, but Brock Heward wiped himself off the turf and threw four touchdown passes. Tribute to the Husky coaching staff, realizing Oregon State was playing a run so tough and adjusting to the pass. And then he hooked up twice with Jerome Payton. This the most spectacular of the two. Well, it was, and what Jerome Payton did was turn the defensive back around, but also they threw it deep. They had been setting it up with a short control passing game, decided to go deep. 34 yards later, you got a touchdown pass. Watch the move on the cornerback. Just a great job by Jerome Payton and a great sell at the end. Great job, great play. For Sunny Six Killer, Steve Priest, I'm Rich Waltz. We'll see you. Washington wins it big.